What is end-stage Lyme disease? I'm Dr. Daniel Cameron. This is part of a common sense Lyme disease series. I base on my own practice and at the 37 years I've been working with my colleagues. Now, one of the questions that comes up is what is end-stage Lyme disease itself? Some people call it chronic Lyme disease. Doctors are starting to call this a syndrome called post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. It's also been called uh, late Lyme. Even in the earlier days, they used to think that they were going to have a first and second and third stage Lyme, with the first stage Lyme being a rash, uh, second be rheumatologic, and some second, the third be neurologic. But others said, well, no, it's neurologic first. So they decided to lump them all into one group, which is late stage Lyme disease. Now, over time, uh, some people have equated those late-stage Lyme disease as uh, a, an immune phenomena. And uh, I uh, find that as the literature is moving, as my own practice is moving, is that often it's a persistent infection. But with the emergence of understanding of co-infections like Babesia, it's gotten much more complicated. So instead of saying this is a syndrome, or an immune complex problem, some kind of immunologic injury, is that uh, calling it late, calling it chronic, whatever you call it, is that I always look a second time or a third time for a persistent tick-borne infections. But what is end-stage Lyme disease, instead of worrying about what causes it? It's a severe persistent illness that can result from delayed diagnosis, but some people end up getting into a chronic late uh, phase uh, without ever going through the first phase or first uh, stage of Lyme disease. It can affect multiple organ systems. So some of the organ systems include joint and muscle issues like chronic arthritis. Now this is not your typical arthritis you might see with the degenerative changes over time. Lots of times it's more of the soft tissue. Some people call it synovitis if it's in the knee, bursitis if it's in the hip, uh, sacroiliitis, which is in the lower back, but it can be any joint with soft tissue. These tissues are what first led to the identification of Lyme disease. But you can also get a fibromyalgia type pain where you can't tell the difference. Oftentimes the fibromyalgia type pain happens to be over the joints where there's inflammation of the soft tissue. Lyme disease can lead to a multiple range of neurologic issues. Uh, they used to think that maybe it's demyelination because the MRI shows white spots, but those white spots show up in multiple other illnesses and in people who are healthy. But this numbness, tingling, and burning could be a neuropathy. Sometimes it's called a small fiber neuropathy, but uh, it also uh, seems to be affected uh, with brain fog, memory loss, and slow thinking that might not be any damage at all, just be an overactive autonomic response, an overactive neurotransmitter response. Uh, there are often seizures or what looks like pseudo seizures that uh, the patients I've seen with uh, these late Lyme issues. Neuropsychiatric issues are pretty common. So this may be related to the overactive immune system where neurotransmitters are high. There's often every mood you can think of. It often comes as a wave or a, what I call a tsunami and it can lead to every emotion you can think of from anxiety, irritability, uh, sadness, OCD, uh, out of body type feelings. Uh, and so when you have these, it, they can be pretty substantial. Uh, also, there's also people who get Lyme disease on top of a mental health disorder so they can have both at the same time. And children have, can have a PANS, which is a pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric uh, syndrome. Heart complications are uh, varied. What was first identified was heart block where the electrical current was interrupted and some people would go all the way to complete heart block, be in the hospital, be in intensive care unit, have to have a pacemaker or an antibiotic to try to prevent progression of the uh, of the heart block. But there's a lot of other issues uh, including uh, POTS, postural Orthostatic tachycardic syndrome, which is a type of lightheadedness one gets when one moves. Uh, there's other issues that occur with the heart, all under an umbrella of Lyme carditis. But Lyme carditis can be a range of symptoms, yet the echo stress test 
and Holter are normal. So can late stage Lyme be treated? I discussed it at the very beginning of this uh, Common Sense Lyme uh, program in that some people assume that uh, late or chronic is uh, an immune issue and uh, I feel that it's important to look whether there's an underlying persistent infection or untreated infection, could be a, a co-infection that hasn't been addressed. And so I don't dismiss a late Lyme or chronic Lyme as damage done or immune related. I have patients all the time who improve. The literature shows that there are people improving. There's also people in the literature where you can see an ongoing infection, a lab and mice work is showing an ongoing infection. So even though the jury's out on, uh, on each individual patient, it's important to uh, look at any of these complications of Lyme disease, what some people call end-stage Lyme disease. So this is part of the Common Sense Lyme series. I based on patients that I've seen in my practice. So thank you for joining me.